So we can call minimalism step one, right? Yeah. On the on the track. Minimalism to is step one to maximizing your life. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'm a One of the wonderful things about minimalism is that you're taking control of your money. The one thing you control is how much you spend. Saving money has a bigger and excess return in terms of your potential investing power than even making more money. That's sort of a counterintuitive idea, but it's one of the reasons minimalism is catching on. Let's pose the question, what really brings you joy? Because that's what we're all after, right? If you do an itinerary of the things that you really enjoy, maybe it's snuggling someone that you're in love with, maybe it's paintballing, whatever it is, chances are it's not as expensive as marketing would have us believe joy is. One of my newfound favorite things to do that brings me the most joy is uh, simply going to the park and laying underneath a tree and just taking nature in, taking in the day and enjoying the moment. That's the point. Why are we talking about not spending money on mocktails and money Mondays? True. Um, we're going to get to that. Let's put it this way. If you make $1,500, you have to pay a third of that to taxes. So you really made a thousand. So you say, oh, I'm doing pretty well. I make a 90K a year. You make 60K. If you save a thousand dollars, you have actually saved what amounts to 1,500 in working hours. Money, the number in your bank account, is a representation of your time. My way of saving money is I perceive myself to be poor all the time. So when I go and I try and buy something that is a higher priced item, I'm kind of make myself feel badly about it. Um, <laughs> I don't give myself the permission to buy it. I was the younger brother that saved too. I had a nice little aluminum case and it was like a bank. I would give my brother loans and he wouldn't be able to pay him back. So I have these notes of me as a child, like mom and dad, I think Jeff needs to find a job or something. He's foreclosing on his loans. Basically being super condescending to my older brother. He's following through on his life. Frankly, it's pathetic. I'm his younger brother after all. And I was just really terrible about it, but I loved that I could save from my, you know, lawn mowing business or something like that, put it away and feel a sense of security there. Not spending, it's not very sexy, is it? Don't buy that gold chain. But when you think about it as making that choice to not buy the thing that might not have even given you much of an advantage in life, I mean, a lot of the purchases we make don't translate directly to a better quality of life. Getting that money to work for you again means you can travel now. You can make choices in your life like, I wanna to try to get some training for a new career. I wanna switch cities. The blunt fact is most people spend to their limits and therefore are in sort of an indentured servitude situation because there's really no wiggle room. Minimalism allows the wiggle room. Somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> Some people think of minimalism as dirty hobo. Hippies. Yeah, dirty hippies. Patchouli, um, <laughs> smelling, <laughs> tent dwelling. Night champa. <laughs> Shamans. <incense. laughs> yeah. And as far as us going, we're, we're getting a little more dirty hippie. Um, we're going, we're considering van life. Tomorrow we are finally pulling out of Nate's parents' driveway to begin full time van life. I'm going to have a gigantic dream catcher that takes up half of the floor space. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> and a bonfire in the back. That can happen. I'll do a bonfire, but there's not going to be dream catchers. So why is van life and you know, this idea of tiny houses, why is that catching on? It's it's a weird double consciousness in our culture. Like we want the oh yeah, little John life goblets, and at the same time, we like the open vagabondish dream of maybe backpacking across Europe and paying as you go. As a child, I did not know that these things were options. I thought sort of debt slavery was just the way things had to be. Pulling the lever on maybe spending a little bit less, 
put that towards an activity that might enrich your life. And then all of a sudden it's like, I'm minimalist, but I'm maximizing my experience. When you purchase something, you get a big hit of dopamine, but you might be able to relate to this two days after you got the MacBook or the new car, it's kind of like, ugh, uh, I don't really feel the same way again. And yet if you go on a vacation or you have an experience, they found that the memory of that thing continues to bring you a certain level of satisfaction. And the fact that you can invest it and make even more, to me it's win-win for almost everybody. Actually through the quarantine, we were all stuck in our houses with all of our beautiful things and we were all miserable, you know? It's like, okay, I've got all these wonderful clothes. Candle. I've got a candle. My plants, <laughs> I mean my plants, they make me really happy. But all of this other stuff, you have no, uh, no way to enjoy it with other people. And that's really the experiences. But just having the thing doesn't actually bring you any happiness. So that's something for me, at least, I, I personally learned. Even though I've always been pretty minimalist and pretty minimalist and don't have a ton of stuff. Because I try to stay in small places so I can't buy <laughs> more stuff. <laughs> Hence the van life. Yeah, I don't know why, like getting a haircut, throwing things out, minimizing, it feels really good. Maybe just because you have fewer choices too. For me, I get overwhelmed when I have too much stuff around. Like clutter, um, it stresses me out. What is that? Do they haunt you? My mom was always like, everything has a place. She was the Marie Kondo, but yeah, for me it was kind of more like um, Fantasia. It was like everything was Fantasia. It was going to come to life and attack me or something so <laughs> so you can use your trauma as a reason to become a minimalist too as mm -hmm. it turns out the the more you can get out of less it creates a billows oh, yeah. effect in your life maximizing minimizing maximizing minimizing then maybe you get the van then maybe you hang out with our boy austin and shoot some machine guns or meet some weird ghost town people or just uh, have an interesting adventure whatever all the crazy things that are coming to our channel coming up soon. So today's mocktail is, the base is ginger snap juice, which contains oh yeah, Fuji apple, that. green apple, ginger, and lemon. And then I use this guy, it's called Soul Drops, healing and relaxation. <laughs> we need that before bed. Adrenal Mojo, this one has tart cherry, ashwanga, ginger, cinnamon, hibiscus, and clove. Um, and then sparkling water and kombucha of your choice. Tonight we used, I think it was the super fruit. If you go to Sprouts or a natural food market, you can get that real deal. The one you gotta buy on the streets from a guy um, because it's got the black label and it's got extra probiotics. <laughs> Anything else? 